Good morning, good morning. My name is uh, Robert Dijkraaf. I'm the uh, director and Leon Levy professor here at the Institute for Advanced Study. And it's an exceptionally pleasure to welcome you all, family, friends, colleagues, and all of those of you who uh, have been and still are and will be inspired and influenced by Freeman Dyson, whose 90th birthday and 60th year as a professor at the Institute we're celebrating this weekend. Uh, it's our own diamond jubilee. And uh, this warm welcome particular to, of course, for the, the whole uh, Dyson family who is kind of uh, gathered here in full battle strength. <laughs> now, you all know Freeman inspires us to think out of the box. And so we are literally doing this by uh, having camping out here in this tent, uh, this <laughs> unique structure, uh, which I will now officially baptize as Dyson Hall. Uh, <laughs> it will live for two days. <laughs> it's a moment, in uh, some sense, it's a, it's a space-time event, and uh, it's a quite appropriate, uh, I think, building to be named after Freeman. Uh, clearly, this, uh, this arrangement needed the uh, alignment of the weather gods. And I know that actually at the, our neighboring institution at Princeton University, it's said that the president has a weather machine hidden in the basement of Nassau Hall. This is almost right. Of course, there was a weather machine. It was hidden in the basement of Fuld Hall. It was uh, von Neumann's computer where the first meteorological uh, ca calculations were done. And so we do feel that uh, the, uh, we, the uh, conjunction of the planets is just right uh, to have this more or less outdoor event. And how appropriate also actually today will be the announcement, uh, the big announcement in Stockholm of the new climate report. So it's all coming together. <laughs> uh, but we also know, of course, if there's one person who can arrange heavenly bodies, it's Freeman, and he's done, done so. A physicist, mathematician, astronomer, author, Futurologist, humanitarian, Freeman has made fundamental breakthroughs in science and mathematics, making him highly original, and his important contribution to an astonishing range of topics. And these topics will all appear in these two days. He has uh, worked on quantum electrodynamics, on nuclear reaction, on solid state physics, ferromagnetism, astrophysics, biology. And he's, of course, beloved for his writing of numerous articles and books about science for the general public. And he has also been heavily invested in human issues, <coughs> from arms control to space travel to climate studies. So this raises the question whether Freeman is a multitasker. And I emphatically can say he is not. And I'm very happy because recent research has shown that multitaskers do worse on everything, including multitasking. <laughs> and indeed, Freeman famously described himself as a frog, not a bird. Birds soar above the landscape, seeing large structures. Uh, frogs are just happy to uh, jump around in their little uh, mud pool, looking at flowers and getting involved in the messy details. And so that will also be the nature of this conference. We all will be frogs, uh, living in various pools and then jumping over to new topics. And in some sense, we will also be an interesting experiment because you all will be kind of voting with your feet, you know, what topics are of your most interest. Now, there will be many uh, remarks here about uh, during these two days, of course, about the personality of Freeman. Now, this is actually kind of a hopeless job because, first of all, he has some first-hand experience in his own life, hard to beat, and secondly, he has a way with words that no, none of us actually can match. So we are exactly our, we ha basically have to stick to the facts. So let me stick to a few of them or what other people have said. The mathematical physicist Roger Penrose has noted that his originality is a deep personal quality of his views, for he is the man who thinks and feels for himself. And his friend, the Oliver, famous neurologist and author Oliver Sacks, has said, a favorite word of Freeman's about doing science and being creative is the word subversive. He feels it's rather important not only to be not orthodox, but to be subversive. And he's done that all his life. So I hope also this meeting will carry some of these qualities. Uh, founding director Abram Flexner visualized the Institute as providing conditions favorable for those who would follow their own inner light. And I think that's definitely what we can say that Freeman has done for 60 years as a professor. Freeman has embodied the Institute mission 
even he has used his nimbleness of thought and clarity of purpose to appraise the Institute's own internal growing pains at various moments in its history. Freeman was born on December 15, 1923, in Crowthorne, Berkshire, England. His father, Sir George Dyson, was a prominent composer, knighted in 1941, and Freeman has credited his mother, Mildred Atkey, a lawyer and social worker, with teaching him that friendship and human relationships were even more important than books. He was a writer long before he was a scientist. At age nine, he wrote his first work of fiction, Sir Philip Roberts' Aerolunar Collision, whose plot involved the possibility that the missing planet Eros might collide with Earth. He stopped writing this book in 1933, the same year as the Institute opened here in Princeton with Albert Einstein on its faculty. At that time, Freeman has already read Eddington's book about general relativity. Just 20 short years later, Freeman was appointed a professor in the Institute School of Mathematics. It's important to realize that uh, exactly 65 years ago, in September 1948, at the age of 24, Freeman arrived here at the Institute for the first time as a member in the School of Mathematics. He came to Princeton for the second year of a two-year stint in the United States, funded by the Commonwealth Fund, first having spent with Hans Bethe at Cornell University. Prior to that, he had worked as a civilian scientist for the Royal Air Force in World War II, and he graduated in 1945 with a BA of degrees in mathematics from Cambridge. Now, that generation, that group of eight young physicists, six men and two women, who came here in 1948 from many, from many, many different countries, were invited by then director, the third director, J. Robert Oppenheimer, to work on supervision. And Freeman came with a very special moment because traveling on a Greyhound bus from San Francisco to Princeton at the end of the summer of 1948 to take his appointment of the Institute, he had the epiphany that united the three versions of quantum electrodynamics invented by Feynman, Schwinger, and Tomonaga and turned Feynman diagrams into the working language of particle physics. Freeman's colleagues included lifelong friends, Ken Case and Cecile Moret, renowned mathematician Ching Chen Chern, and Freeman's first wife, Verona Hefli, the mother of his eldest children, Esther and George, who also will be here. In fact, I'm very happy that the whole family is here, including all six children and grandchildren. This group of physicists in 1948-49 also included two men who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, Hideki Yukawa and Freeman's very close friend, Jack Steinberg, and we're very relieved, uh, very happy and that he's here and honored uh, with his here with us the whole weekend. Walter Stewart, an economist on the faculty uh, from 38 to 58, described the young physicists, Freeman among them, as beyond doubt the noisiest, rowdiest, most active, and most intellectual alert group that we have had here. And Freeman recalled piling into the battered old Dutch with a dozen other young physicists driving roughshod through the institute woods to the river, demolishing trees, in his word, and scaring the deaf the wildlife and the distinguished professors taking their morning stroll. <laughs> Freeman was a professor at Cornell in 1951, despite never having earned a PhD. He was elected a fellow of the Royal Society in 1952 and was appointed a professor at the Institute in 1953, all before the age of 30. And he has been awarded many, many dozen, uh, honorary degrees. I think a crucial aspect in Freeman's work, and actually in, in, in these two days, will be the importance of diversity. In Freeman's own word, I look both at scientific and human problems from the point of view of a lover of diversity. The preservation and fostering of diversity is the great goal that I would like to see embodied in our ethical principle and our political action. So I hope that we have, for you and we all, have a terrific two days uh, celebrating that diversity, the curiosity, the inspiration that uh, Freeman is giving us every day and so, again, a warm welcome on my behalf. And now it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Nathan Seiberg, professor in the School of Natural Science, who actually was the one initiating this program. He has been, uh, we are most appreciative for him having organized this uh, weekend conference. And I also heard uh, this morning that you, in a very previous life, he was something of a weatherman. So that, again, is part of a theory why we're such uh, lovely circumstances here. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Robert, and thank you all of you for coming.
on behalf of the School of Natural Sciences, I'm very happy to welcome all of you to Dreams of Earth and Sky. This is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate Freeman Dyson's 90th birthday and to have a perspective of his work and impact across the sciences, sciences and humanities. The School of Natural Sciences is very grateful that Freeman agreed to let us organize this program, which reflects both the diversity and his interest and has a huge, has huge impact on many fields. Freeman did not want this event to be about the past. He wanted it to be about the present and the future. And in particular, he wanted the IAS members to find it of interest. This is very characteristic of Freeman, who is exceptionally forward-looking, not interested in indulging in the past, and has often remarked that he is obsessed with the future. I want to thank the remarkable group of chairs and speakers who readily agreed to participate and to contribute to this event. I am sure that we will have an exciting set of presentations today and tomorrow. I would also like to thank Director Robert Dycroft for the stunning painting of Freeman Dyson, which has, was created to commemorate the event, and you can see on the bags and elsewhere. The program is divided into four sessions, mathematics, physics, astronomy, and public affairs. It covers just a fraction of Dyson's interest. Since to cover all of Freeman's pursuits, we could need at least a month. We are happy to see so many people in the audience. Some of them had to travel a long distance from other countries in order to come here. They represent many different scientific and non-scientific fields. And we think this is a testament to the impact Dyson's groundbreaking and diverse contributions and to the many individuals his work has affected. The title, Dreams of Earth and Sky, which Freeman suggested, is taken from the title of a book written in 1895 by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian school teacher who worked out the mathematics of interplanetary rocketry. He wrote in the book, the Earth is the cradle of the mind, but we cannot live forever in the cradle. I am sure Dyson would agree. Dyson is a fellow of many distinguished societies and the recipient of numerous, numerous awards, too, men too many to mention them here. But I would like to quote from a citation of his 2012 Henri Poincaré Prize of the International Association of Mathematical Physics. The award recognizes Dyson's many decisive contributions to physics and mathematical physics, including the study of quantum electrodynamics, the stability of matter, and random matrix theory. And we'll hear some of that later today and tomorrow. Further, the citation concludes his lifetime achievements has been an inspiration to generations of scientists. All of us agree with that. It's my pleasure to introduce now Peter Sarnak, a professor in the School of Mathematics, who will lead this mathematics session. 